There was a Google engineer that claimed that the Lambda was sentient. Do you think there's any inkling of truth to what he felt? And more importantly, to me at least, do you think language models will achieve sentience or the illusion of sentience soonish? Ish. Yeah. To me, it's a little bit of a canary in a coal mine kind of moment, honestly, a little bit. Uh, because, uh, so this engineer spoke to like a chat bot at Google mm -hmm. and uh, became convinced that uh, this bot is sentient. Yeah, um, asked it some existential philosophical right. questions. And it gave like reasonable answers and yeah. looked real and uh, and so on. Uh, so to me, it's a... Uh, he was he was uh, he wasn't sufficiently trying to stress the system, I think, and uh, exposing the truth of it as it is today. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think this will be increasingly harder over time. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think more and more people will basically uh, become. Um, yeah, I think more and more there will be more people like that over time as as this gets better. Like form an emotional connection to yeah. to to an AI. Yeah, chatbot. perfectly plausible in my mind. I think yeah. these AIs are actually quite good at human uh, human uh, connection, human emotion. A ton of text on the internet is about humans and mm -hmm. connection and love and so on. So I think they have a very good understanding in some in some sense of of how people speak to each other about this, mm -hmm. and um, they're very capable of creating a lot of that kind of text. The um, there's a lot of like sci-fi from 50s and 60s that imagined AIs in a very different way. They are calculating cold Vulcan-like machines. That's not what we're getting today. We're getting pretty emotional AIs <laughs> that actually uh, are very uh, competent and capable of generating, you know, plausible sounding text with respect to all of these topics. See, I'm really hopeful about AI systems that are like companions that help you grow, develop as a human being, uh, help you maximize long-term happiness. But I'm also very worried about AI systems that figure out from the internet that humans get attracted to drama. And so these would just be like shit talking AIs. <laughs> they just constantly, did you hear? Like they'll do gossip. They'll do, uh, they'll try to plant seeds of suspicion to like, other humans that you love and trust and uh, just kind of mess with people uh, in the, you know, cause, cause that's going to get a lot of attention. So drama, maximize drama yeah. in, uh, on the path to maximizing uh, engagement mm -hmm. and us humans will feed into that machine. Yeah. And get it'll be a giant drama shitstorm. Uh, yeah. The, <laughs> so I'm worried about that. So it's the objective function really defines the way that human civilization progresses with AIs in it. Yeah. I think right now, at least today, they are not sort of, it's not correct to really think of them as goal seeking agents that want to do something. Mm -hmm. They have no long term memory or anything. They, it's literally, a good approximation of it is you get a thousand words and you're trying to predict a thousand at first, and then you continue feeding it in. And you are free to prompt it in whatever way you want. So in text. So you say, okay, uh, you are a psychologist and you are very good and you love humans. And uh, here's a conversation between you and another human, human colon something, mm -hmm. you something. And then it just continues the pattern. And suddenly you're having a conversation with a fake psychologist who's like trying to help you. And so it's still kind of like in a realm of a tool. It is a... Um, People can prompt it in arbitrary ways, and it can create really incredible text. Uh, but it doesn't have long-term goals over long periods of time. It doesn't try to, uh, so it doesn't look that way right now. Yeah, but you can do short-term goals that have long-term effects. Yeah. So if my prompting short-term goal is to get Andre Kapati to respond to me on Twitter when I, <laughs> like, I think AI might, mm. that's the goal, but it might figure out that talking shit to you, it would be mm. the best in a highly sophisticated, interesting way. Right. And then you build up a relationship when you respond once, mm -hmm. and then it, like over time, it gets to not be sophisticated and just like just talk shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and okay, maybe it won't get to Andre, but it might get to another celebrity. It might get to other big accounts, yeah. and then it'll just so with just that simple goal, get them to respond. Yeah maximize the probability of res actual response. Yeah, I mean, you could prompt a uh, powerful model like this with their its opinion about how to do any possible thing you're interested in. Yes. So they will just, they're kind of on track to become these oracles. I could I sort of think of it that way. They are oracles, uh, currently it's just text, but they will have calculators, they will have access to Google search, they will have all kinds of gadgets and gizmos, they will be able to operate the internet and find different information. And um, yeah, in some sense, 
that's kind of like currently what it looks like in terms of the development. Do you think it'll be an improvement eventually over what Google is for access to human knowledge? Like it'll be a more effective search engine to access human knowledge? I think there's definite scope in building a better search engine today. And I think Google, they have all the tools, all the people, they have everything they need. They have all the puzzle pieces. They have people training transformers at scale. They have all the data. Uh, it's just not obvious if they are capable as an organization to innovate on their search engine right now. And if they don't, someone else will. Uh, there's absolute scope for building a significantly better search engine built on these tools. It's so interesting. A large company where the search, there's already an infrastructure, it works, ads brings out a lot of money. So where structurally inside a company is their motivation to pivot? Yeah. To say, we're going to build a new search engine. Yeah, that's, that's really hard. So um, it's usually going to come from a startup, right? That's, um, that would be, yeah, or some other com more competent organization. Um, mm. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. So currently, for example, maybe Bing has another shot at it. You know, as Here an example, we go. Microsoft Edge, <laughs> as we're talking offline. Um. <laughs> I mean, I definitely. It's really interesting because search engines used to be about okay, here's some query, here's 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 web pages that look like the stuff that you have, but you could just directly go to answer and then have supporting evidence. Um, and these uh, these models basically they've read all the text and they've read all the web pages, and so. Sometimes when you see yourself going over the search results and sort of getting like a sense of like the average answer to whatever you're interested in, uh, like that just directly comes out. You don't have to do that work. Um, so they're kind of like, uh, yeah, I think they have a way to dist of distilling all that knowledge into like some level of insight, basically. Do you think of prompting as a kind of teaching and learning, like this whole process, like another layer? you know, because maybe that's what humans are. We already have that background model and then you're, the world is prompting you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think the way we are programming these computers now, like GPTs, is is converging to how you program humans. I mean, how do I program humans uh, via prompt? I go to people and I, <laughs> I prompt them to do things. I prompt them for information. And so uh, natural language prompt is how we program humans. And we're starting to program computers directly in that interface. It's like pretty remarkable, honestly.